Hello, this is Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll be having a conversation with the professor, Professor Ernest Aite. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we have um, Professor Aite with us. Prof, good to have you here. Thank you. Um, how have you been? Very good. Very good. I, uh, I couldn't complain about my current situation. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm in good health. We thank God. Can you ever live life outside of the university ecosystem? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, one of the things I've enjoyed most about my life and about being at the university. The university is the only place that gives you a permanent place and yet allows you to do a thousand and one other things. Mm. You know, okay. It allows you to express yourself. It allows you to contribute to what other people are doing. Uh, it allows you to engage with different types of people all the time. So even though I've been associated with the university, uh, I've had engagements with different types, private sector, public sector, NGO, you know. So it's uh, a very interesting life I've had. Mm. Yeah. But do you miss active um, university teaching service? I don't miss it. I, uh, I've done it and I've moved on. Okay. Uh, the work I do still brings me into active contact with universities, so different types, so. all over the place, mm. in Africa, in Europe, in the US, in Canada. And so, so I'm always in the university environment. Mm. Mm. Uh, and I enjoy it. Mm. I'm able to compare different types of universities. And uh, I meet different types of students. I meet different types of faculty. So I, I could have asked for a much better uh, yeah. occupation. <laughs> so Professor Ernest Aite is our guest on Footprint uh, today. And, you know, once I mentioned the name Professor Ernest Aite, your, the period um, when you were vice chancellor of the University of Ghana come, pops up, you know, and um, it was a very busy schedule uh, at the time. So this will be two, 2010 to 2016. 2016. How was that? It was a very different kind of experience for me. I, I had been at the university since 1986 when I returned from doing my PhD in Germany. So I'd been there for more than a decade, two decades. And I um, had been at ESA, done all the research, did the teaching at the economics department. And so by the time I became vice chancellor, I had a fair sense of uh, what was required to be mm. done. Yeah. But can you walk us through the process of becoming the vice chancellor? You know, uh, was it nomination or election? Or how no, did it just, you, you apply and you get appointed after interviews. Very regular. You know. So I had done uh, the regular thing as a research fellow at ESA. I had gone through the various steps of being promoted and so on. I had become director of ESA. I, I was director of ESA from 2003 uh, to 2010. Indeed, um, having done all of that, and I was coming to the end of my term, my second term as director, and I was wondering, what next? What do I do? Um, it's like you are, you are young, but you've reached the uh, top position in your career. Mm -hmm. You've got to move on, or just stay there and mark time. Um, that was when I was attracted I was invited actually by the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. to become the director of a new initiative that they had, the Africa Growth Initiative. Mm -hmm. 
So I thought, oh, this is great. I mean, here I am pondering what I'm going to do the rest of my life uh, at age 53. And somebody's offering me a brand, brand new uh, position in a very prestigious institution. So I didn't think twice at all about it, the time to go. But just when I was about to leave, then my attention was drawn to the fact that uh, the University of Ghana wanted a new vice chancellor. I had not paid attention to what was going on. Mm -hmm. you know, so it was a very difficult position, situation for me. I had a new job, good pay, a uh, lot of prospect, and then University of Ghana vice chancellor. I had to think for a long time, talk to many people about whether uh, I should express any interest. And everybody thought, look, you'll be the best person to be the vice chancellor. So rather, uh, in a very tentative mood, mm. I applied for it. At this time, had you taken the job in Washington already? I had, I had taken it, uh, but they had they allowed me to work remotely. Okay. So I was doing it from here, mm -hmm. which gave me a lot of time to do many other things, yeah. Uh, so I had to move there uh, in January of 2010. And uh, the University of Ghana position wasn't going to be available until August of 2010 anyway. So it was a, a period in which I could reflect on the weather. You know. Interestingly, the University of Ghana uh, invited me to for the interview, but uh, one of the first questions they had me at the interview was, if I was given the job, would I come? <laughs> 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 but they didn't believe you that, would uh, leave that I would one, leave yeah. Brookings, uh, a very prestigious institution, and come to be vice chancellor of the University of Ghana. But I was committed to the University of Ghana. I mean, I, I believed that uh, no matter what I was able to achieve at Brookings, it wouldn't compare with uh, any things that we were able to do at the University of Ghana. That was, for me, the main attraction. The University of Ghana was an institution that I knew, I knew very well, and uh, I believed I was prepared for making whatever changes that were required. Mm -hmm. That was what, so there was never any doubt in my mind mm -hmm. that if I was offered the position, I would take it. I, I know that the people who were interviewing me were not that uh, not convinced. convinced. Yeah. <laughs> so there were many who were surprised <laughs> yeah. when the offer was made and I took it. There were many who were surprised. Even my, some of my friends uh, who lived outside and knew what it meant to be a Brookings and who knew uh, um, the kind of influence that the institution had were surprised, some were disappointed that I walked away to go and run. So you had to resign from the Brookings? Yes, I had to resign. Uh, I had a four-year contract, so I left after one year. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. To take over the role as Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana. Yes. Mm. So your tenure, how would you describe it? You know, it's, a, it's a, a question that I've been asked several times, which I've often answered with great difficulty. <laughs> Uh, there were some very good things, mm -hmm. there were some good things, and then there were some bad things. So all in all, um, I think for the university, I believed that uh, I did what I could, I did my best. Uh, did I enjoy it all the time? Uh, sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. Were there things I wanted to do that I couldn't do? Yes, there were things I, I wanted to do that I couldn't do for different reasons. So I would say on balance, it was positive. On balance, we made many changes. On balance, there were many things that the university had been talking about for years and had not been able to do. Uh, one, because there were no resources. Two, because people were afraid of what would happen if uh, things didn't go well. And there were people who were adamant and wanted would block any change and so on. Um, so there were things that needed to be done. I believe we changed 
or we tackled many, many difficult things. One of my proudest moments as a vice chancellor was when I took the late uh, Professor Alex Kwapun, the first Ghanaian to uh, be a full time the vice chancellor of the University of Ghana. I took him, he came to visit. I, I invited all my predecessors to lunch at the vice chancellor's lodge. And after the lunch, he wanted to see the construction work at the new University of Ghana Medical Center. And I drove him there. He saw it. He looked at it and he was in tears. He was in tears because this is a dream come true. From the 60s, the University of Ghana had been talking about, as part of the creation of the medical school, having a teaching hospital. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about it for years, through the 60s, through the 70s, through the 80s, through the 90s, 2000s. Finally, the University of Ghana was building a medical center. You know, he thanked me, he said, oh, I'm glad you've made it possible. Mm. I'm glad you are helping us to live our dreams, you know. So those are the kinds of Things nice are, memories yeah. that they are, that uh, I, I was able to facilitate the development of the teaching hospital for the mm. It is, of course, there are also bad things that I can oh, tell you. Yeah, I mean, that's human, mm. human mm -hmm. institutions. Mm. But, but so if the story of the University of Ghana is being written today, how do you think you will be captured? Depends on who writes it. Well, what are in the all that, fairness. What are the things I've learned? In, in all fairness. Yeah. One of the things I've learned over the years is that uh, uh, a lot of history gets written by people who like to present things from their perspective. Definitely. Even if it's uh, wrong sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, there are times when people do things uh, where they take things on balance. And uh, I think for any um, objective analyst looking at University of Ghana uh, over the last four, five, six decades, um, you can always identify what each management did mm -hmm. or did not do. Um, one thing that I'm certain about is in my six years, I tackled many things, many different things. When I met with um, Alex Kwapon, uh, just before I took office, he said to me, if you want to succeed, take a few things and focus on them. Focus on them, make sure that you're able to do them right. Uh, don't do too many things, because if you do, the likelihood that you succeed in doing them is very low. So take, and I, I thought it was great advice, and I said, I'll do what I try to do. Mm. But I noticed as you moved on that the, the challenges were so many. You, know, you, you deal with students' issues. By the time you're done with them, there are staff issues. There are issues about infrastructure. There are issues with the uh, in, international funders. You know, so there were many. It was extremely difficult to say, even though this is not part of my priority list, I will ignore it. Mm. It was very, very difficult. So I remember I'm, some of the most difficult students related issues that you, you, you encountered. You know, uh, the, the first one I remember was uh, in my first few weeks in office, uh, there were about 7,000 students that had been admitted, and about 6,000 of them had reported. And there was no accommodation. There was no, at the time I came in as vice chancellor, the university was doing this in, out, out, you know, in. Uh, you know, there were thousands of students that were looking for accommodation. No, no accommodation. And um, of course, I could shrug my shoulders and say, well, that's not my problem. They will have to find their own way. But I just couldn't see how 
students could come from Domahin Crew, from uh, Cape Coast, from wherever, and uh, they've been given admission, and they don't know where to sleep. Mm. Uh, I was in my office when a student who I didn't know walked in and uh, said, asking me if I could help her to find a room. I was surprised that this student had the nerve to walk <laughs> to the vice chancellor's <laughs> office to ask for accommodation. Wow. You know, but he told me that the situation must be really, really dire for a student, a first year student, to have the nerve to go to the vice chancellor's office. That was when I resolved that, look, let's see what we can do. Mm. Look, clearly, in that first year, there wasn't much you could do. I was worried about the fact that uh, uh, the, my predecessor, uh, Prof. Tego, had uh, started the four hostels that uh, we did with support from a consortium of banks. Mm -hmm. Uh, Which hostels would this be? Would be the, what we call the Man Hall today, the okay. Man uh, uh, Sean Aka, mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth uh, C, yeah. and then Kwapon, Alex Kwapon. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they had the Liman, what are the Liman, then Liman hostel had been finished. Obviously, Dr. Hila Liman. Precisely. Okay, and who's the Elizabeth C again? Elizabeth C was the first uh, female graduate of the university. Oh, okay, interesting. The first female, yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, Jean Aka. John Aka was uh, Echo Bank. Echo Jean Bank, Aka. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. Echo Bank. We named it after him because, as the uh, when the university was looking for funds mm -hmm. from alumni to build the Jubilee Hall, mm -hmm. he led the fundraising. Oh, he was, is he, an alumnus? Of, yes. Of, oh, okay. So, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. I mm -hmm. thought he was Ivorian. Ivorian Ghanaian. There are many Ivorian Ghanaians. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know the Ghanaian yeah. part. Yeah, yeah. Of that. Know, yeah. Was, okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the last, the fourth one, Alex Ale Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the Liman Hostel had been completed, mm -hmm. but it was ten percent occupied by students from uh, other institutions, but not the University of Ghana, mm -hmm. because they couldn't afford the rent. Oh, okay. It occurred to me: Why do we spend? Why do we borrow money to build a hostel? which our students will not use because they cannot afford. We did everything possible to renegotiate the terms. Uh, we then finished the other three, mm -hmm. all in the first year. We finished the other three, we borrowed money from banks to, to finish the other three. Um, so by time, by, by August 2011, they were ready. Mm -hmm. So that for, and uh, because the rent there was higher than uh, in the traditional halls, the students were reluctant to go in there. Obviously. What we did was uh, just simply give students admission and assign them to the... So if, you, if you wanted to come to Legon, automatically you got a room. And yeah. Like, yeah, take it or leave it. <laughs> and it worked. Oh, wow. It worked, yeah. That's how we managed to, to get solve... Yeah. And then later I was oversubscribed. Yes, precisely. And because the students didn't want to pay the higher rent, in August 2011, there was this massive demonstration <laughs> of wow. students wow. protesting, you know, protesting the, the new rents. Mm -hmm. So while we were doing that, we also borrowed money to fix the traditional halls. So we fixed them, made them much, much more habitable, uh, much more comfortable, mm -hmm. and the students liked them. So while their leaders were encouraging them to protest, mm -hmm. the ordinary students was enjoying it. <laughs> so today when I talk to when I talk to a bit young people from those days and uh, they, they confess that's <laughs> and it. they confess that they were being misled. But it's uh, always a case. Precise, yeah. So that's one thing that uh, okay. uh, you know we did that I, I thought th there were protests from the students. Mm -hmm. There's one thing else that we wanted to do, but we didn't get much support from students and so we didn't we couldn't do it. We wanted to introduce a meal plan. Mm -hmm. A meal plan. You know, I was tired of seeing students sitting under trees yeah. eating. I didn't think it made for a good university environment. I was tired of seeing students go and buy food. In the bush canteen, precisely. <laughs> go and buy food and take it to their rooms. Um, you know, I wanted to see students live a life that was comparable to what I What's lived. you enjoy when you were in university. Wanted, that's, that's what I wanted. Mm. I wanted a student to be able to get up at 6.30 and then walk to the dining hall mm -hmm. and have a dinner, uh, have some snack, 
whatever they wish. I wanted them to be able to wake up in the morning and go for breakfast. A better sense of community. Precisely, yeah. you know. So we are trying to introduce a meal plan where you the, the money that you would have spent at the bush canteen, mm -hmm. I was saying to them, give it to me, mm -hmm. and I'll give you three meals a day. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't trust that we could do it, yeah. uh, but something that we had negotiated with a number of uh, service okay. uh, uh, deliverers who would have been able to mm -hmm. pro provide us that. It didn't work because many of my colleagues in management also believed that there was no point and they said quite rightly that look many of the problems that we've had with students over the years have been over meals food so today if we are not obliged to give them food why are you going to why bring, you it, bring back? it back, why the are you it back? <laughs> you know, my response yeah. always was without a good system for providing meals a university can't function properly and i believe today that a lot of the problems of Ghanaian universities comes from the fact that come from the fact that uh, we don't make it possible for them to live in a, a proper community of students mm -hmm. where you sit with your colleagues behind a table That's correct. and you discuss politics mm -hmm. you discuss economics you discuss religion you discuss music because you are sitting, you, you are You're spending 30 close, minutes together yeah. having a meal they've lost it. Professor Ernest Aite is my guest on Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll take a short break. When we come back, you have heard him talk about the University of Ghana. But who is Professor Aite? We'll be right back. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363 on Go TV. Access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Welcome back to the program. This is Footprint. I am Samuel Atamensa. My guest today is Professor Ernest Aite, and I know this name is um, is you must be a stranger if 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 you know you don't know this name. Um, and now he's here in the studio. We, Prof. So with the name like like Aite. You are, you are obviously, you must be a southerner. <laughs> the Volta, Greater Accra, Central, you know. Where, where are you from? When you're called Aite, uh, it's obvious. You come from Accra. Uh -huh. so, you know so they are the Togolese Aites. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But the, the Togolese, we say Aite. Aite, that's mm -hmm. correct. With the, with the accent. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, top, yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Accenting you, yeah. Yeah. So, um, my father was uh, James Ai Aite, uh, born in Jamestown. Mm -hmm. um, my Jamestown, mother, Jamestown, Jamestown, Jamestown. But uh, he lived in Collegon, so I grew up in Collegon. Oh, wow! Yeah. Just across the street from Collegon. <laughs> yes, precisely. Uh, yeah. you know. So you used to visit the the, the sea. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, even at night I could hear the waves. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, do you remember Oxford Cinema? Yes, I do. But uh, Offer, Offer Cinema. Offer, o sorry, Offer. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we had Offer Cinema. Offer, and yeah. We had Plaza. Mamprobi Plaza. Mamprobi yeah. Plaza. Yes. Yeah. So, so you used to go to Offer. I used to go to Offer. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you were a guy, pal. I'm not talking about guy, pal. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I did my way around. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 uh, my father came from Jamestown. We lived in Collegon. Uh, my mother was a fanti. Mm. My mother, my mother's maiden name was Kate Markin. She, she, the, the Markin family of Winneba. I don't know if you know about that. Oh, of course, of yes. course. Of but course. my grandfather, the there's, Reverend, there's, there's one 
young man in parliament I who see. has popularized <laughs> yes, the name <laughs> and the reverend minister who yeah. unfortunately passed mm -hmm. um, during COVID. Yeah. Uh, so my, my mother's father was the reverend Frank Markin. They were two brothers. Okay. And uh, the, the reverend Frank Markin was stationed at Abra Dunkwa. Oh. That's where he met my grandmother. And then he lived there. He built his house there. So my mother's hometown uh, would have been Abradunka, or with mm -hmm. Abradunka, yes. So kind of a combination of Winneba and, Winneba and Abradunka. And Abradunka. So her father came from Winneba, her mm -hmm. mother from Abradunka. So today, if you ask me where do I come from, I'm a girl uh, <laughs> with a fronty, uh, what do you call it, connection. And opinion, precisely. <laughs> and of which I'm very, very proud. <laughs> very much so, very much so. And uh, interestingly, uh, at the time I was born, my mother, who was a midwife, a private midwife, had her clinic at Nkoko, Nkoko in wow. the eastern region. In the eastern region. Precisely. So that's where she lived and built her home. And that's where she met my father. So, hang on. So, a girl boy mm -hmm. jumps into, uh, you're born in Kumasi, mm -hmm. gets into Nkoko, mm -hmm. in right in the heart of the eastern region. Precisely. Um, yeah. So, my first uh, experience with school. Mm -hmm was at Nkoko Methodist Primary. Mm -hmm. So that's where I started. Which year? Which you remember the year? 1960. Wow. I went to class when in 1960. But you are, you are very young then. Five. Yeah, five. Well, those days, people used to go to yeah, class yeah. one. Like, seven, like, eight. You know, people went five, six, seven. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, so, so class one, yeah, to age five, yeah. So I, was, I, was, I spent my first three years mm -hmm. at Nkoko Methodist Primary. Oh, wow. And then after class three, we were moved to Accra. We were moved to Accra, uh, interestingly, for, for reasons we didn't know at the time. Mm -hmm. But our father, the girl man, mm -hmm. decided that his children should be speaking Ga, not Chi. Oh, <laughs> of course. If you had in Koko yeah, there. Precisely. Yeah. But so, Koko, what were you eating? As a girl man, were you eating Kenke? Oh, we had Kenke. Kenke. Koko had Accra town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They Nkoko, still do. There was a part of Nkoko called Accra Town. In Accra Town, uh, there were people from Osu, La, Teshi, Nungwa, Jamestown, all over the place. So you're not too exposed to no, the No, no, no. To the and there, 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 there was a Fanti community there, so mm -hmm. Fanti doctrine was not difficult to find. Uh -huh. mm. But it was a busy town at the time. It was a busy town. It, it was uh, the link between Kwewu land That's and the rest of the country. Eastern, yeah. So the, the train stopped there. Mm -hmm. So anybody going from Accra or Kumasi to the mountains, oh. you come to Ngoko and then take... Uh, and then from uh, Accra to Kumasi, from Accra, to precisely. Ngoko. Ngoko was a, a, a fairly busy commercial town. Yeah. 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 So uh, after class three, we were moved to Accra. And... Uh, I studied my education then at Radiant Way Preparatory School. I don't know if you know of Radiant Way. Of course, Way. by the sea. By the sea, right? By the but sea. there's no more. No, oh. the school moved from Radiant Way, from, from, from Collegono mm -hmm. to Dakuma. Oh, I see. Yeah, after the proprietor. I mean, the, the school that when you are sitting there, you are seeing the sea like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, 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 from, from uh, I went to, so I went to Radiant Way Preparatory School, finished wow. from there, and then went to. Oh, so, so, to, so yeah. you did the common entrance from Radiant Yes, I did the common entrance, you know. Uh, for the common entrance, um, we had to move from Collegono to Niwara School. I don't know if you ever heard of Niwara School. I know Niwara. So I took my common entrance exams at Niwara School. Yeah, New Era. Um, That's uh, what they call it, uh, near the uh, Tima Market. Um, Palladium yeah, mm -hmm. down. So it's New Era. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to cross. The, you have, you actually have to cross, cross the, the, the Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that must be very interesting. Yes. So no, mm. I, no, those were very enjoyable times. Yeah. I I, I enjoyed every bit of it, wow. and uh, many of the people that I I grew up with in Collegon, I still. I mean, uh, I was going to come to that. You know, uh, to 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 be living in. Collegono and attending Radiant Way mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. you definitely be considered a, a, a privileged, yes, you know, yes, because you had Radiant Way, um, and there were a few. There was others. Cambridge. 
there was Cambridge mm -hmm. down there. And there was Oxford, uh, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. Oxford, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But if you move towards the Latibio Cross yeah. side, then yeah, you're getting Majosda, and Majosda yeah. Preparatory, yeah. then you're coming to Premier International yeah. later, yeah. St. Anthony yeah. mm -hmm. School and all this, Precisely. you know. So you know, there were many of those who taught in those schools yeah. started at Radiant Way. I can imagine. Yeah, they, they, so they were teachers at Radiant Way who then left and started many of those other schools. Oh, I see. Yeah. So I, they, they sort I, of I came from the same school. school is one. I went to New Hope School in Kolebu. You, you went to New Hope School in Kolebu, yeah. No, New, New Hope is different. Yeah. New, Hope, New Hope was uh, Mrs. Kofi's... Uh, yes. yes, thank, thank you very school. much. <laughs> That was different, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh. New, New Hope was a real Adabas school, wasn't it? <laughs> so, so I was told later. <laughs> but yeah. you know, when you are close to Bishop Bowers, yeah. yeah. you dare not call yourself that Adabas. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. No, so, so, so uh, at least for many of my neighbors in mm -hmm. Collegon, yeah. going to Radiant Way meant that uh, you were privileged. Tell me um, about it, yes. Uh, at least in, in, your, in our school, we, we spoke English. So I'm we, told. We didn't have to speak. <laughs> <laughs> the, the people in College want to call it, the, the, uh, the, uh, what do they call it, uh, uh, Bluffo School. Bluffo School. Bluffo School. <laughs> school. You know, the thing is, you know, <laughs> bro, the, the, the thing about speaking guys in the schools in those days, mm -hmm. it, it, was not, it was not the guy for communication. A guy that you don't want to repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was a very, very enjoyable experience. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some of the people you grew up with in the Collegon environment, maybe in school, in the community, do you remember some? Oh, yeah, quite a few of them. Uh, quite a few. Interestingly, uh, my next door neighbor uh, became Professor Aaron Lawson. Aaron, Aaron Lawson. Oh, okay. Uh, he was dean of the medical, medical school, school was and he became ask, provost yeah. of the College of Health Sciences. Mm. Uh, he was also in Radiant Way. Wow. You know? Yes. Wow. Uh, there, was, there was quite a large Lawson family. Precisely. In that space. Yeah. Father, yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Bra Brother Lawson. Brother Lawson. Yeah, the same, yeah. same family. Yeah. And then the Martin Lawsons also yeah. connected. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so uh, I, I should see. I'm quite proud to say that many of the young men and women mm -hmm. around me in those days became fairly successful wow. professionals you know, from Radiant Way. I've been Radiant Way for a long time. I remember when I became Vice Chancellor and I went to uh, Hollywood Medical School mm -hmm. for a meeting with the uh, staff faculty. Uh, and the, the, the top hierarchy of the medical school, you know, including the retired professors and so when they were sitting in their room, I could identify uh, many right. of my neighbors or old, many of them were older than me. Yeah. I could see many colleagues on the boys. Wow. <laughs> you, you remember them? Oh, I remember them. Yes, them. yes, yes, yes. Uh, Professor Hector Addo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know. He was, he, him, I don't know. His, his father's house was right behind my father's house. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the late Professor Champo. Of course. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the whole play, uh, your lost have mentioned. You know, the, apart, apart from the colleague on the boys, then he also had the man probably like, like a... a um, Neo Tunate, who was the dean of the dental school. Yes, you know, Nati, so, yeah. precisely. So, um, it was, Collegon was a, a, a place where, today it's changed. It's, oh, a, yeah. it's a very, very different yeah. place. But uh, growing up there, uh, look at what we've done. You, uh, you had a Tuesday, Tuesday market. A Tuesday market. Before, 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 before that. Yes, yes. That was uh, right next to Dr. Bannerman's uh, 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 home. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, Dr. Bannerman's, um, and then there used to be a park there. Later on, it was referred to as Agonos Park. Yeah, that was nearer to Kolewe. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Across yeah, the near, street yeah. from Kolewe. Plaza. Agonos Park and Haas Park. Haas Park. Haas Park became the Indarfa Park, the In industry. The, <laughs> but it, it, so clearly, you, you know your colleague. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually drawing you somewhere. <laughs> Why you don't play football? Why I don't play football? <laughs> who told you I didn't? I don't play football. <laughs> because somebody who grew up there yeah. actively. Yeah, no. uh, my father they didn't encourage us too much mm -hmm. to uh, uh, sort of be all over the place. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it was very easy to do that. Precisely, that you know. Uh, the first time that my father saw that I had gone to swim, uh, the colleague on the beach. Hey. 
I had never seen him that livid. You know? And I was surprised that for somebody who grew up in Jamestown from a fishing community, uh, who was reputed to be a very, very good swimmer, mm -hmm. that he would be surprised and upset that his son had gone to swim in the sea. You know, uh, later on, I came to understand from my mother why he was quite averse to uh, playing with the sea. Yeah. Because yeah. in his uh, youthful days, yeah. he lost his best friend. They, they'd go swimming yeah. in Jamestown, and his best friend didn't come back. He died. That used so to happen after a that, lot. my father stopped swimming. He, did, he never went anywhere near the sea. Wow. Yeah. It used so, to happen a lot, so, especially so in his mind. Pool. He was protecting his children from the the difficulties that he had had at his yes, child. Yeah. Yeah, so did he allow us, encourage us to go and play with the area boys, as we call them? Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. that sort of yeah. But the thing is that the area boys, they all knew you. They knew me. They knew me. They, they would meet me. Yeah, you because know? your house had a gate. <laughs> I wonder who you be talking to. That's significant. <laughs> we had a gate and we had a garden. <laughs> that's, that's significant. We had a gate, we had a garden. Yeah. So, yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. the, Sundays, people came to take pictures in the garden. We, 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 will, we will collect. We will collect my, my father didn't know that we were collecting money. So, this is more. Ba 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 no basha, ba no basha. Uh, yeah, people will come, take pictures, we will collect 10 pesos. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Yeah. So tell me, from Radiant Way, Common Entrance at uh, New Era, where mm -hmm. it was like a center yeah. for Common mm -hmm. Entrance, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, um, only at our time, we, we, St. Mary's was the place that mm -hmm. everybody went to later, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. You went to Achimota School. Mm -hmm. um, which year was that? 68. Uh, 68. Mm -hmm. um, it was, was it an Achimota or suicide? No. You know, I'm quite sure that um, um, it's a question, how did I get to Achimota? Yeah. It wasn't my father's preference. Oh, it wasn't? No, no, no. My father was a, a typical gunman. A cracker. Uh, a cracker, you see, a cracker or a cracker high school. Okay. That, those were, in his mind, I would go to, because he wanted me to go to a day school anyway. Ah. Uh, he didn't want to be paying boarding fees. Yeah. So he wanted me to go to a day school. It was either Accra Accra or Accra High School. For me, the prospect of every morning going to take Trotro from Collegon to Accra Academy was just That's unacceptable. <laughs> yeah. All my friends, when they go from uh, Radiantry, they go in state transport to Cape Coast or to uh -huh, Kumasi or uh -huh. something. And then me, I'm taking torture to Accra. <laughs> that was unacceptable. <laughs> so I decided that there was no way I would be a day student. Mm. There's no way. And if I wasn't going to be a day student, then Accra I was out. Mm -hmm. uh, Accra High Accra High was out. Mm -hmm. But I also knew that my father was an Anglican. And so if I had to go to a boarding school, there had to be a decided college. So I knew that if I chose Adesado, Accra Academy, Accra High School, no problem. I thought about it for a long time. And uh, my mother said to me, so which school are you going to? I said, I'm thinking. Then she said, have you thought about Achimoto? And I said, not really. She went to Achimoto. She had been to Achimoto with her sister. And then without much reflection, on the implications, I chose Achimoto. But I never had the courage to tell my father that I had chosen Achimoto. <laughs> but I knew there'd be fireworks. <laughs> wow. you know, I did it. So when the results came, I went to the post office, I picked up the letter, Achimoto School, and uh, it was addressed to me. So I opened it. And I saw that I'd been invited to an interview at Achimoto. Of course, now that it's happened, you, you, you have, have to, to inform him. Yeah. Yeah. So I go to him and I said, uh, Dad, I've been invited by Achimota School. They said, Achimota School, how did they invite you? <laughs> <laughs> they say, I don't know. I said, the teacher chose it. <laughs> <laughs> the teacher chose it for me. <laughs> oh, how can a teacher do that? Yeah. But of course, the, I, 
So, um, whether a teacher chose it or I chose it, we it's happened. It's yeah. happened. We went for the interview. As they say, the rest is history. <laughs> nice. So that's how I ended up at Achimota, Achimota School. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your experiences in Achimota School. So at this time, we were 11, 12? 12, going to 13. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 1968. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. How was it there? When you got there in 68, who were some of your seniors that you met? Oh, um, so of course the, uh, the, the senior prefect at the time was called Konu, the older brother of uh, Mr. Konu, the former registrar of the of yeah, That was his older brother. Mm -hmm. I think it was, it was William. Mm -hmm. um, so they were in upper six. The people who were in uh, lower six, uh, would include Ambassador Dicky or say. Oh, okay. Uh, Dicky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were they were in lower six at the time. Mm -hmm. Um Dicky or say uh Ambassador Corte. Yes. Uh, Chrissy Corte, who died. Chrissy Corte. Uh, sorry, sorry, his brother died. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. his brother was my classmate. Mm -hmm. But he he's still around. Ambassador Corte, yeah. yes, he's mm -hmm. around. Yeah. Um so they were in lower six. Uh from five, uh there were people like uh, uh Sonny Asantisechi, I don't know if you know Sonny. No. They, they, they were in four five at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, ambassador Idora Korte, mm -hmm. who uh, died. The, the lawyer. lawyer. Yeah, no, he was Grand Ambassador to Italy okay. at the time she died. Yeah, she's a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, she was yeah. a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. They were in four five. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, four four, uh, you know Okojani, NDK? Yeah. 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 They, they were in four four. Mm -hmm. uh, who were they pulling from three? They were pulling from three, included. Uh, uh, Nata Kenya, Philip Abuaji, uh, I, I don't know, let me see. Um, yeah, those who, and those immediately ahead of me in form two, uh, Dr. Ashon, Samuel uh, 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 Nino Ashon. Yeah, of course. He was the uh, uh, Minister of State. Right, uh, the daughter works with us up your course. Precisely, yeah. yeah. So they were in form two. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, my classmates uh, were. So, Te Kote, who died about a year ago, um, Abeta Shon Lamte in Oktayazu. Teazu is a pilot. Uh, he runs, or he used to uh, run CityLink. Okay. CityLink, City and now he has a Star West uh, aviation training program. Mm -hmm. Kofi Boateng was with uh, uh, Gallant Textiles, uh, uh, managing director. You know, there uh, are no women in your group? Uh, many women. Interestingly, when I went from one, from 1B, one there were 34 of us in the class, 17 boys and 17 girls. Wow, split. Yes, split. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things I do is try to remember the names of each of the 17 boys and each of the 17 girls. Wow. You know, uh, I don't know if you know uh, AC Bensiencho. Mm -hmm. AC Bensiencho is a doctor. Okay. Uh, 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 professor Yaman Ford, okay. Ford is a professor in Cape Coast. University of Cape Professor Ford again? Uh, Linda Jama Ford. She okay. used to be Linda Odoi. Okay. Uh, she's a professor at the University of Cape Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, Victor Kutinsang. This, this is a roll call, please. Yeah. Roll call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Victor Kutinsang uh, did architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, was a professor. Oh, yeah. At, he, uh, taught, he taught uh, at KNUSD. Uh, at KNUSD. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Kofi Sefabuachi is a doctor in the, uh, the, U the US. U US. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Sere Blavu. Uh, Isaac Chumwef, who is a doctor in South Africa. You know? Well, was quite so they are scattered all yeah, over, the, all over place. the place. Yes. In, incidentally, this year, next month, we celebrate 50 years of leaving school. Hmm. How are you going to celebrate that? Well, we are sponsoring the foundation celebrations in the, the, school, uh, in, yeah. in the school, and then we are going to have our own dinner dance at uh, mm -hmm. the Badi Beach Hotel. We say it's the last big bash. You know, after after this year, we don't think we will have the energy yeah. to organize another yeah. such yeah. thing. So. Uh, we are celebrating 50 years of leaving school. Wow. You know, uh, no, it's been quite a, a, a journey for us. Um, who, the people who, uh, Adrian Odui, uh, New Odui, Dr. Odui, he was Odui. a year behind us. You know, so they, they are the 1974 year group. Oh, okay, Dr. Odui, Akai House. Akai House, yes. Mm. So and, they, they, um, they, they, they are immediately behind us. Oh, so, wow. uh, I had a very, very good time in the school. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So you are obviously in touch with one another. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I became OA president. At some point. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Until last year, May. Hmm. And being president. But you are OA president for, was it four years? Six years. Six years. 
Is that a, t a, a ten year, three years? A, three a, years? a term is two years. Two years, and you can go for three terms. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I did that, and that allowed me the, the best part of being OA president. It allowed me to meet many, many old Dutch Mortons, mm. many of them, or different year groups, old, much older than me, and then the young ones. Uh, my son also went to Dutch Morton School, so up to his mates and beyond. Mm. Uh, no, it's been a wonderful experience. Because I, I of course, I, I didn't go to Achimoto School, but I still remember your tenure as, as OA president. <laughs> it, was, it was a bit, you know, pronounced, you know, in, in the public, you know. Yeah. Uh, hitherto, it was just among Achimotans. <laughs> and <laughs> no, uh, um, I became president at a time of uh, uh, enormous challenge. Mm. Uh, on the land, on the front. land issue yeah. that I was going to so, talk so, about. So yeah. we had to deal with it. Mm. We had to deal with it. And uh, when you have that kind of uh, uh, contentious issue, you always be in the you, news. you cannot sweep it under the carpet. That's correct. There were too many. You know, uh, there were too many interests, uh, political, uh, chieftaincy, and so on. And um, you couldn't simply say, "Hey." Because of these big, big people, let's leave it. But you're a big man, so... <laughs> so I had to use whatever clout yes. I could command. And uh, I'm very happy that I was able to mm. uh, mobilize support from yeah. Accra. So was, that, was this um, land issue resolved? I wouldn't say resolved. But I wouldn't say resolved. made progress. But, yeah, a lot of progress has been made. Mm. Uh, at least on the legal front. Yeah. You know, one of the things we did we were able to get Achimotans to contribute money, uh, which was used to uh, pay off lawyers, uh, used to fight the case and make sure that uh, the right things were done. Mm -hmm. um, that is what led to the result. Before then, uh, Achimotans knew that there was a problem with the land, but they couldn't, they didn't know the extent of the problem yeah. and they couldn't be bothered. But we made it everybody's business. Mm -hmm. We made everybody's business, and we got court judgments in our favor. Uh, so the rest now is for an implementation of what the courts have decided. So okay. yeah. So I wasn't a trouble seeker. I was just oh no, to, not I was, at all. I, I was trying not to solve problems. But truth <laughs> be told, that challenge exists in many secondary schools. Yeah, many, I went to Swedish secondary yeah. school and were visited with this kind of challenge mm -hmm. where yeah. the adjoining villages mm -hmm. started mm -hmm. picking. Mm -hmm. lands that were given mm -hmm. you know ahead of their generation yeah. and one day somebody told them that oh the master see crap oh uh, one's in what's the school for <laughs> oh somebody come starts building yeah, yeah so yeah. for us we yeah. just started putting up a wall mm -hmm. around the place yeah. The, yeah. the ones that were under no contention mm -hmm. we walled mm -hmm. before yeah. you know yeah and then you yeah. know so we have professor Ernest it here on footprint uh, we'll be taking a short break. But listen, he went to Achimota School from 1 to from 5. For the younger ones, you don't even understand what it means to do from 1 to from 5. <laughs> what is whole SHS thing? So five years in Achimota School. And interestingly, he did two years in Presby Boys Secondary School. Yes, Presec. We'll be right back. We'll tell you about his experiences at Presec. And then we'll compare the two. This is Footprint. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Thanks for staying tuned. This is Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We have Professor Ernest Aite here with us, and um, it's very interesting. So, Prof, you left Achimota School. Did you do any sports? I played hockey. Okay. Yeah, I played hockey. Into university, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, All right. yeah I, I didn't 
do much sports at the university level, okay. at the secondary okay. school, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are a good one? I think so. Yeah. Who, were, who were some of your playing mates at oh, the so time? Tai David Kwao, Sean Lamte, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll check with them. <laughs> okay, so yeah. so from Ashwater School, you ended up in Presby Boys. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you remain in Ashwater School? You know, um, that's a very interesting question. My cousin, Paniato, uh, Samuel Stephen Aitiato, mm -hmm. he was in Ashwater School with me, a year ahead of me. And uh, he moved to Presec. They were the first batch of six formers. But you were a science student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, was, I did uh, science up to all levels. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So obviously. So uh, Pani moved from Archibald to Presec. And I was in touch with him. And I used to tell very interesting stories about Presec. And uh, how, because they were the first batch of six formers, they had all the privileges. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know it, it sounded... You know, very attractive. Very attractive. And I was just thinking about actually that there are so many rules here. And why don't you <laughs> go where you assist for me? And, uh, you know, how you should walk. Precisely. Should that. You know. So that's uh, following uh, my cousin Pani. Mm. Uh, I went to Presec. Okay. And uh, I thought it was a great experience. Two years. Two years, yes. So, I went so to how Pani. will you describe your, your time in Presec? You know, uh, people often ask me, so the, the, between the two institutions, well, that's uh, a question. Uh, um, which one did you enjoy? And I, I, I tell them I had different experiences. Okay. In Achimota School, I learned how to operate uh, within a very regulated system. Mm -hmm. I learned what it meant when the school said, you can do this, you can't do that. Uh, I didn't give you much room to sort of uh, maneuver, maneuver. Mm -hmm. so, so it made you a very disciplined person. Um, but I, when I went to Presec, because it was new, the SIS form was new, we were the second batch, uh, there was a lot of experimentation being done, which meant that the teachers gave us a lot more space to operate. Um, a lot more uh, discretion about what you could do, what you could wear, when to, you know. And uh, it gave you a strong sense of independence. Mm. And that is something that has helped me a lot. Effectively, uh, you had the Presbyterian ethos that would guide you. So every morning you went for uh, the assembly and then did your prayers and mm -hmm. so on. You, you learned the Presbyterian ethos. You, are, you also learned that uh, the resources available here do not compare with what you had before. So you've got to make the best. The precept that I went to is very, very different from the precept of today. Mm -hmm. It's very, very different. So Difference in, in terms in of resources. Okay, you okay. mean you didn't have much at the you, you time. You didn't have much at the time. Well, this was before it became Be before a the science form science. Yeah. So while we were at Presec, the Sixth Form Science College was introduced by okay. the Ministry of Education, and that made a very very big difference, and led to the modernization and transformation of Presec. Okay. Today, Presec is easily one of the best schools, of course. Uh, of uh, course. Uh, 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 not just in Ghana, but in West Africa. Mm. And they keep making precisely yeah, yeah. improvements. Presec yeah. has come a long way. And I'm very, very happy about the way Presec has adapted. The, the way Presec has uh, since moving from uh, Krobodumase to Legon. Legon. The way it has, you know, um, matured. Mm. Uh, taking advantage of all the resources that have become available. Um, it's not an exaggeration to say if you go to a medical school today, uh, many of the key individuals that have sort of uh, over their past mm -hmm. uh, 20 years passed through Presec at some past, point. Yeah, precisely. Mm -hmm. but, your, but your son went to Achimota. Why didn't you go to Presec? 
he, he wasn't seeking to do uh, uh, myths. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, yeah. Bro. So, so, so that, that's how you know, right. I had two different types of experience, both mm -hmm. of them very positive. Wow. What do you do now? Since retiring, mm. you know, I left Legon and I walked straight into another job. Yes. I, I, but you never retire. Uh, to, yeah. So I run what we call the African Research Universities Alliance. Mm. It's a network of uh, 16 of Africa's flagship universities. Did you pioneer it or it was there No, okay. I, I, was, I was one of the pioneers. Mm. Yes, I was one of the people who initiated it. Um, so the, the, the originators were in South Africa, at the University of Cape Town, mm. um, and the Wits University, also in Johannesburg. They invited me to think Wits about... University? That's Wits. a huge one, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Uh, they invited me to sort of think about what we could do together, how we could improve on the collaboration mm. among African universities. My job then was to help recruit other... Uh, similarly keeps you busy? Universe. Keeps me very, very busy. You doing, won't retire again. Doing a lot of... I, my, my term ends in a year. Oh, okay. In, in a year, I'll be done. I would have done eight years. And uh, I'll be retiring honorably. Okay. And, uh, hopefully, so we're just hopefully, about ending. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you think about tertiary education in Ghana today. <laughs> That's a huge question. I know, uh, you know because if I give you one hour, you can spend the whole one that, hour. That, that's a huge question. It has its strengths and its weaknesses. That's no, what I was saying. It's, it's, sorry, I'm asking because of where you sit mm -hmm. with, if you like, an overview of the continental performances mm -hmm. or the activities mm -hmm. in other universities yeah. with, with, with respect to that. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that uh, um, we have a long way to go. I've seen in, not just in Ghana, but I've seen in uh, several African countries a, rot, a lot of uh, uh, retrogression over the years, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, will, lack of willingness to confront difficult challenges. Many of the things that I said I saw in Legon when I was vice chancellor, I find in many African universities. Uh, some of them are trying very hard to resolve them. Mm -hmm. Others are quite um, okay to be just moving along. Will you know. South Africa be an exemption to some of these? South Africa things? has very good universities and some very bad universities. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like the last it, it, bit. Yeah. <laughs> so it, 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 ha it does have, it, and, and all the six South African universities in our network are very good. Mm. You know, we have Cape Town, we have Vitz, we have Stellenbosch, mm -hmm. we have uh, Pretoria, we have Rhodes, and then we have KwaZulu Natal. You know, so these are very, very good universities. They can compare easily with yeah. uh, many of the European universities. That's correct. So the challenge for us is how to use their resources to improve the others through collaboration. And that's, that's what I do. Super. That's what I do. Super. Bringing universities together to do research together, to teach together, to run various programs together. Professor Nastalis Aite, we thank you very much and we wish you well in this effort. Um, and I, we hope that when you, are, you, you retire, somebody can take over and bring it to um, um, proper fruition. You know, thank you for joining us on Footprints. People, you've been listening to Professor Ernest Aite and you heard it for yourself. Very accomplished, as he said. He has the good stories, the bad stories, and not so bad stories. But in all, we thank God that he's alive, he's strong. He still has more to do. And trust me, when he's, re when he's ended this job, something else will come his way. <laughs> thank you. This has been Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamens. I'll see you next week.